Welcome everyone and thank you all for joining us today for our first remote working with ASIGHT session. We understand that we're all trying to adjust to our new working environment and we want to make sure you feel fully equipped to work from home or wherever you'll be working at the me in the meantime. Just to introduce myself, my name's Lola, I'm the Senior Communications Con and Content Executive at ASIGHT and I'll be hosting today's call. Joining me today is Charlene, one of the platform's training experts. She'll run you through the basics of using the platform, just as a little refresher and to remind you of anything you may have forgotten if you haven't used the platform in a little while. Before I hand over to Charlene, just a couple bits. The session will be around 15 to 20 minutes. If you do have any questions over the course of the demo, please type them into the chat function and a member of the team will get back to you over email. However, if you have questions not related to these specific topics or regarding your workspace, please contact your account manager. Finally, this refresher session will also be released on Thursday. So if you have any colleagues who are also feeling not so confident using the platform and have, weren't able to make this one, they can watch it on Thursday. So without further ado, over to you, Charlene. Thank you, Lola. Um, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. So as Lola mentioned, my name is Charlene. I'm one of the trainers in our UK region. So I'm going to go through with you guys a little bit of basics and getting you back on board using A-Site again. So I've got six, six topics on my agenda, just a little bit how to set your passwords again to get you back on board, finding all incomplete tasks and little shortcuts how to get to them quicker, how to find any files that have been uploaded into A-Site, how to use our right-click functionality, creating forms and being able to search and filter your information. So the first item on our agenda is, to ha is how to reset your password. So Let's navigate over to A-Site. All you have to do is go on to www.asite.com. Simply select the login button on the right hand side. Once you've done so, you'll notice at the bottom here, you've got a button that says forgot password. If you select those words forgot password, you can type in your email address. So for example, if it's Sally, oh, Sally Solutions, you'll be able to type the email address in here. And then once you've done so, you will need to type in the gray wording that's there for you. So for example, the, my one will say 224, your one will be slightly different. So that's all you've got to do. Type in your email address and the gray bit and hit send. Once you've done that, A-Site will send you a link directly to your email address, which will allow you to populate a new password and then away you go and you're back on board using A-Site. So I'm just going to log in for today's session. Let's have a look at what the next item on our agenda is. So the next item on our agenda will be tasks and shortcuts. So how can you find your incomplete tasks? Let's have a look on, back onto a site. So you, when you log into ASITE, you will have a screen that would appear like this. And this is what we call your dashboard. On your dashboard, it's a little bit a bit like shortcuts for you. The first gadget that you will have will be files in complete tasks. If I click and hover over this box, you'll notice on the top right hand part of this box, there's two arrows which have maximize highlighted. If I select those, this will open up my incomplete tasks gadget. Now, on my gadget, I've got a bit of red and I've got a bit of green. Anything that is highlighted in the red is overdue. Anything that is highlighted in the green is due to day and in the future. There is a key just at the bottom here which shows you and tells you what that is. Now, let's take a closer look at our overdue tasks. Overdue task on our outer ring, we've got five which are for comment. We've got six which are for action. However, you'll notice there's an inner ring. In that inner ring, it gives you a total of those incomplete tasks which are overdue. Take note, every time I've hovered over any part of this pie chart, my mouse or my cursor has turned to a hand. This highlights to me that this is a clickable function. So if I click on the inner ring for overdue, this will show me my 11 overdue tasks. 
Now, how do I know that this has happened? At the top of my screen, a filter will apply. So if you notice, automatically a site creates that filter for you. Great. At the bottom of my page, it shows you showing one to 11 of 11. These are those 11 files. Within this files area, I also have a my tasks column. Within this my tasks column, it tells me I've got some for action and I've got some for comment. Now, to recap, how can you find any outstanding tasks that you have within a site? Navigate to your dashboard. Within your dashboard, you've got the first gadget, which will either have some reds or some greens. And if you click and you select any part of the pie chart that is relevant to you, you will simply just click and select and it shows you those files. Now, let's have a gander and look at what the next item on our agenda is. Viewing uploads. So how can you find files that have been recently uploaded into a site easy the next gadget that you have on your dashboard is new files published now within this new files published there are four bars it tells me since i was last logged in there's been one file that's been uploaded today there's been one file however yesterday there were 16 files Take note, every time I've hovered over any part of that bar graph, my cursor has turned to a hand again, giving us that same bit with a little bit of description. And then you can simply click and you can select. So if I wanted to see the 17 files that have been uploaded in the past week, I can click and I select that bar. And again, like before, the filter gets applied and my 17 files are shown at the bottom. Now to recap that, if we go over to your dashboard to find any files that have been uploaded into your project, simply hover and you can select on the bars. Now, let's have a gander and see what the next item on our agenda is. So the next part is right clicks. So how can you find or use the right click functionality to the best of your advantage? Let's go over to a site and we're going to use our shortcut again and open up these new files published. Let's go look at the ones that were published past week. Now in these files area, I'm just going to right click on the top file. Now we'll start from the bottom. I'm just going to show you a few right click functionality, but there's nothing wrong with you guys just having a play around. And please don't hesitate to ask us any questions if you want to know a bit more detail on the right click as well. If I go up, you have the ability to share files from a right click. So if a colleague doesn't know how to find certain drawings or documents um, that they were looking for or layout schemes, you can right click, you can share them with somebody who is logged into a site. If we go up, you've got download files. Now, if you wanted to download more than one file, all you have to do is just put a tick in the files that you want to download, just like so. And then right click, you then have the option to download files. Now, when you download multiple files, you can zip them. So a site automatically zips them for you until you're ready to go in and just break them apart. If we look at the next right click functionality, we've got new. Now, if we hover over new, if we wanted to comment or start a discussion on particular files, you can do it straight from a right click. Or one of the most important things that might be happening due to what's happening in the world at the moment, you may need to create some project managers instructions for compensation events. You can do that by you can associate your documents that are in your files area, as we can see. If you hit the new button, you've got project form. From here, you'll get the option to associate any compensation event forms. So to sum it up, right click is a little bit like shortcuts. So I've shown you how you can create and associate a file from a form into a form. You can download multiple files and you're able to share files. Perfect. Let's have a look at what the next item on our agenda is. Oh, creating forms. So within a site, you have the ability to associate files with your forms, as I've just shown you. Or if you wanted to create standalone forms, all you'd have to do is navigate to the project forms tab once you've clicked on project forms, left hand side of your screen, you've got the button there that says new. If you click and you select new, it opens up any form that you have. So in my current project at the moment, we just have a request for information. However, in your projects, you may have some technical queries, you may have meeting minutes, 
or anything that may be in here, you can simply select the form and it'll automatically take you to creating your RFI. Now, I'm just going to hit cancel because I'm going to show you another little gem whilst we're creating forms as well. If when you're in your forms area, open up and expand your form. As you can see, I have a request for information here. If I right clicked on that, it gives me an option to remove as favorite. Now, if I remove this as favorite, it means I don't have a little star there anymore. Now, if I right click, I can mark it as a favorite again. If I wanted to find where my favorite forms were, I can go into my dashboard. Bottom right hand corner of my screen is request for information. But the beauty of this part, you can also create a form from your dashboard. So you can click on your plus button and this will take you directly to your RFI or any form that you wish to create. Project manager's instructions, instruction to submit quotation to the contractor, whatever form it may be, you can do it from the standalone project forms area or from the dashboard if you make it a favorite. Now, to sum that up, you can create forms from a standalone area in the project forms area or if a form is made a favorite. Now, let's have a little look at what the next item is on our agenda. Oh, the last and the final section of today's demo will be based on searching and filters. This is a common thing because you may need to find files that have been uploaded into ASAP six months, a year ago, two years ago. Yeah, you need to be able to search for those files. To do so, let's go over to the files area. Now, within the files area, I can tell you, you've got a search box in here. Now, this box, as you can see, it will search for anything that starts with and it contains. So if I was to search for the word training, for example, it's going to search on the file and within the file itself. Now, if I wanted to be a little bit more specific and say to the system, actually, you know what? I remember the particular file I'm looking for had the word training in the document title. Now, document title for me is a column header. I can hit my create filter button, which will now populate any filter criteria. If I click in the filter criteria and I search for doc title, this will automatically bring up the doc title just underneath the files area. Now, this is a search for box, so it's an input box. If I type in the word training in here, and then I'm going to hit enter, this is finding anything that has the word training in the doc title, which is great, and it's brought those files up. Now, if I wanted to be a bit more specific and say, I'm looking for files that had the word training in the doc title, but were only uploaded by Agatha, I can go in, create filter again, Search for publisher. Oh, helps if I spell it right. Click on publisher. And then now take note that the first search filter that we used was an input box. The next one is a drop down manual. So click on the drop down. Oh, Agatha's at the top of the list. And then I'm just going to hit close. This should bring up all files that Agatha applications uploaded using and had the word training in the document title. Okay. So as you can see, training, training, training. Now within these files, I might think, you know what, I might be working on these for the next month or maybe two months. I can save this filter. So I have the ability to save the filter just by clicking on the floppy disk or the save icon. Once you've clicked on the save icon or floppy disk, you can literally type in your filter name. So I'm gonna call this Agatha Training. If I wanted to share this filter with a colleague because we're working on the same amount of documents, I can literally type it in here and I'm just going to say I'm going to share this with Amy. OK, and then hit save. Now, I know I've got that filter saved at the moment. I can only see that filter. If I wanted to remove the filter, I have the ability to do so by just simply clicking on the crosses. And once we've clicked on the crosses, it will automatically take the filters out for us. Now, I want to pull that filter up again. If I click, oh no, if I hover next to my create filter, I've got the funnel. On the funnel, it says filter list. If I click on filter list, if I scroll down in here, 
just as I do training with these, if I click in, oh, Agatha looks like been busy today with lots of filters. I've selected the Agatha training filter and have a look, it's brought up those exact files that I was working on, okay? So having the ability to search for a file, you can do it using the search button or you can create filter and save filters. There is no limit, by the way, into however many filters you wanted. Just be a bit more word of advice, be a bit more specific how you save your filters. Perfect, so let's have a look at the agenda and see where we are on our, oh, that's it, that's it for me. So that's the last item on our agenda today. Thank you very, very much for your time. Please don't hesitate, like Lola said, to input any questions that you have within your, your chat box, which has appeared. I think it'll probably be about the bottom right-hand corner. Ask any questions and a, and a member of a site will be uh, respond back to you. Thank yeah, you, and over to you, Lola. Thanks, Charlene, that was great. So that concludes the first instalment of our working remote with a site session. I hope that, you know, refresh mm. your memory and has you feel a little bit more confident getting back onto the platform. Big thank you to you, Charlene, and to all of you for joining us today. Like Charlene said, if you have any more questions, please don't hesitate to contact our customer support or check out our A-Learning Freemium modules. So that's that for today. Enjoy the rest of your day. Keep safe and we'll see you soon for the next session. Bye. Thank you. Thanks.